Hey guys, and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. Last episode, we set up our very first ore processing system here, and we also unlocked the HV tab of our quest book. However, as you may notice here, we have a bit of a storage problem, so I decided to do something about that before we do anything else progression-wise. Before that though, I went and grabbed the miner that we set up last episode on the oil sands ore, which we are now using for diesel production. I refilled the blast furnaces to keep producing steel, and I began to expand the base. So some plans have changed quite a number of times actually on how I want this base laid out, and very long term we may not actually be staying here, we may move to the void dimension or the garden dimension, but it's going to be a while before we unlock that thing. I did want to move the storage room location though as it's kind of in the way where it was and it really wasn't laid out the best. And since we're now pushing into HV, I felt like we were about to hit a brick wall in terms of our organisation, and it would make progressing really really difficult, so I took basically the whole afternoon to try to sort things out, and I think I've got it to a position where I'm happy with it. And while I was building, the oil that we were collecting from the spout had actually run out, so we'll have to replace that thing, but it did produce us a really really nice amount of diesel and polyethylene. I also did move the miner a few times, one for an iron and gold vein, and another one on a tin vein which is currently where it's at at the moment. We're going to need many, many more resources to progress. So in fact, it's probably not a bad idea to pick up a few more of these miners now that we have the fuel to run them. And finally, I did decide it was time for our smeltery to go. And it has been moved, we still have it set up, but it's no longer right in the middle of our base. <laughs> so here we are, smeltery out of the way, and I've replaced the concrete here to give us the run speed bonus all the way down. And this is our new storage solution. Of course it's always in a state of, of change, <laughs> you know how this game can be. So this is the next iteration of our storage, but I left plenty of room for us to expand this, and this will probably last us up until we get to Applied Energistics. We got everything separated out and labelled, we got drawers for the most common dust, so we still have to populate this. Ingots over this side, uh, some random coins and miscellaneous things on this side, all the blocks in the barrels here, and these were all the chests that used to be piled up. They are... They are organised, I know where everything is in these. I mean besides these two chests here, but <laughs> everything else is pretty much separated out into different categories. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out actually, it's looking not too bad. And our smellery is just on the right hand side here. Oh and check out these doors. Those are awesome, right? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I decided to actually mark out the entrance to this place, which is going to be right here. You can ignore the circle on the floor now, that's no longer a part of the plans for the base. But yeah, this is going to be our entrance, and then the plan I think is to have a bridge which goes all the way to the other side of the river. Probably put like another archway right here where I'm standing, and then we have the main path all the way through the base. So yeah, with that out of the way, I think it's time to progress again. So the first item on our list today is to get oil. So we do now have the system to turn our oil into fuel, which we're going to be using for power from now on. At least for the foreseeable future, we have over half a million in our super tank here. But the oil buffer, as you can see here, is now empty. I think we should have a spare super tank here somewhere. Is it in the machine chest? Aha, there we go. So if I remember correctly, our pump should just be down here, which is about halfway down the oil spout. Oh yeah, there's actually quite a lot still left to do. Maybe we should just leave this for a little while. Oh, and there's a zombie stuck at the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, I bet he's having fun down there. Oh, look at this. Look how much oil is still left in this thing. Wow. I didn't realize the oil fields could get this, but wow. Okay, I think we may have to move this down a little bit more. Oh, it's even cut into the mine shaft here. <laughs> well, what we do have already, we can put into our iron tank so that we can keep distilling into fuel. All right, so next on our list, let's upgrade our EBF. So currently we are running this with two MV energy input hatches, which basically equates to an HV blast furnace, although we do only have the cupernicle coils on this. If we give this the canthal coils, not only do we get access to higher tier recipes, we also get an EU discount. To make the canthal though, well, we need canthal wire, and canthal wire normally has to be vacuum frozen, which we're going to need a clean room for. If you're not aware of the clean room, that's a... Uh, that's going to be a whole project in and of itself, it's this thing here. There is another route to cool them though before we have the vacuum freezer, but first of all we do have to mix the dust using iron dust, aluminum dust, well did I just say aluminum? Aluminium dust, <laughs> and chrome dust. The iron, well that's no problem, we had the miner on the magnetite vein. In fact, you know what, we should have some iron dust up here. Oh yeah, we have three stacks up here, nice. The aluminium dust is a little bit more tricky. I'm not sure exactly what the best route to get aluminium is now. I mean, we do have, uh, what, 40 ingots in the output of our blast furnace, plus some more cryolite and alumina, which we can use to smelt more. 
Yeah, 20 seconds per ingot. But we will need a way to replenish it, and I think the best way for us to do that at the moment is just to use some clay dust. So I'm going to harvest this whole mountain here. Well, maybe not the whole mountain, but <laughs> a decent chunk of stained clay. Oh yeah, and I also did make up this uh, Draconic Evolution Magnet. Really, really easy to craft, and I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> I love this thing. Okay, we picked up about half the mountain. <laughs> Let's get all this thing processed. Oh, and look at what we've done here. This is really, really bad. Look at all the grass color because of pollution. Yeah, this area is looking super, super healthy, don't you think? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to put all of this clay through our grinders here. That is going to give us clay dust, which we're going to electrolyze here. It will also give us water, so we avoid the excess in the trash can. And from this, we get alumina dust, which can give us aluminum. Aluminium. I mean aluminium. <laughs> and yeah, we do also need cryolite for this. And I think uh, what we had in the blast furnace there is all we have. And maybe our miner is finished on this tin vein. I think it's under here. Oh, hello. <laughs> Look at that guy. Sneaky little guy under there. I don't think so. I think we use the crossbow here. Easy does it. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, this guy is finished with the tin vein, which doesn't look like it's given as much tin, actually. It's mostly garnet sand. You know, the purpose of redoing the storage system is to make it easy to find stuff. I don't know where anything goes anymore. <laughs> it's going to take a few days, I think, for me to get used to this, but it should work out in the long run, right? Well, anyway, yeah, you may recall a few episodes ago that we found this brand new cryolite vein 400 blocks this way in the Twilight Forest. Oh, wait a second. Aluminium gravel. Let's not pass this up. So yeah, the miner we put down on top of the cryolite vein. Give this some fuel as usual, and the chest for output. And a torch. Let's not come back to creepers this time. <laughs> so that cryolite was basically just insurance for later on, so that we have enough aluminium. Let's get back to this canthal. So if the math is correct here, we need a, t a total of two stacks of ingots. This is a 2x canthal wire which equates to one ingot each, and we need 16 coil blocks for the blast furnace. So we have our iron, we have our aluminium cooking, we just need to get a little bit more chrome. And the chrome dust we can get from electrolyzing ruby. This is all the ruby we have to our name right now, but to get any more ruby we need to centrifuge redstone, right? Yes, 10 pieces of redstone give us, gives us one ruby, but this is all the redstone we have to our name. So we found this redstone vein in the nether, this is a fresh redstone vein here, Probably easier with the miner, and we should probably build a second one, but we're out of circuits, and mining with this magnet is super satisfying, look at this. <laughs> I'm going to see what we can pick up ruby-wise here, though. You know what, actually not too bad. We got over a stack and a half of ruby, and a couple of stacks of redstone here. I've already thrown all the crushed in this chest. Man, look at all the ores we've gotten just in the last, like, five minutes. <laughs> uh, all the stone dust though has to go. Yeah, that's going to clog up the system here. So even though this is uh, faster than what we had, it's still going to take some time for it to get through all of this stuff. So I'm going to get all this processed and get our canthal dust. Although, as I mentioned, we do need to freeze the ingots once they come out of the blast furnace with the chemical bath. And more MV machines means more circuits. So um, I think we've got some LVs to work with. One MV. 12 HVs and 36 LVs. Uh, let's fix that actually.
Alright everyone, as usual, I've been doing lots and lots of crafting here. And we ended up with 37 MV circuits. I made two stacks of the LVs. I also got all of our materials processed for the Canthal, which should be in this blast furnace. It's been a few hours actually, I have been AFK, and I hope this is still running. In fact, I actually disconnected the inputs to this pipe here, just to make sure we would get enough steam through to our blast furnaces, and it looks like it's still running, which is a good sign. Oh yeah, three stacks of hot Canthal ingots. But of course we do still need the chemical bath, which we have the circuits for now. And we also need something called IC2 coolant. But the other part we haven't touched on yet, other than this molten cupernickel, which should actually be finished in this alloy smelter. Oh yeah, lots of cupernickel here. The other part is actually mica. So last episode we had our miner on a mica vein. And I didn't realise how many steps there was to this. But if we take... Hold on, where's the bomb here? <laughs> the first step is a mixer recipe with raw rubber dust, which we have over here in this LV mixer. Looks like it's out of power since we disabled the steam there. But this mixes mica with raw rubber dust to give us mica-based pulp, which we then send into this forming press, which was moved from that location over there. Mix that with some asbestos, and this gives us the mica-based sheet. I didn't actually count this out, I've just been doing stacks and stacks of this stuff since we need it later on for the coils anyway and then the sheets have to be mixed with silicon dioxide dust and all of the silicon dioxide we're actually getting from electrolyzing clay which we done earlier on so we have uh, quite a decent backlog of silicon dioxide and this gives us the mica insulator sheets the last step is to throw it through the bending machine i think on circuit one and from this wait we don't want it in there <laughs> send it to the output chest from this we get our mica insulator foil, which we use in the assembler recipe for the coils here. So it's 12 mica per coil, we should have enough from the amount we've made up. I think the cantho should be finished by now. Yeah, so let's get our steam going back through on this side. Make sure all of these machines are processing and wow the pollution is insane here now. <laughs> yeah, it's gotten kinda crazy here. And I was about to check on our pump here, and apparently it's gone. I have no idea where this thing went, uh, perhaps the rain? I think I might have left that block open. I have no idea. <laughs> but we... It looks like we need another pump. Luckily, the super tank of oil is still here with 1.8 million in it. Ah. Well, I'm kind of sad about that, actually. <laughs> Maybe we should just make the MV pump. Oh, pollution. Pollution. <laughs> the oil, though, is going to be a project for another time. Uh, probably later on today, I'll, <laughs> I'll fix that. But first of all, let's try to get our MV chemical bath. So I have some of the MV components. We need another machine hull, one more circuit which is done in the assembly machine. We're actually waiting on some more diodes for this, still just buying them from the quest book. But if I haven't missed anything, this should be our MV chemical bath. No quest though. So yeah, with the chemical bath we have to make our IC2 coolant. It's going to take some water or distilled water. How difficult is it to make distilled water? Oh, we can do it in the distillery. And we actually have a spare distillery here somewhere. There we go. So this has to be done in an MV mixer, which is right here. So what I think we'll do is remove this assembling machine temporarily, cut the MV wire here, and place a transformer. I have just done a backup, so this should be safe. Yeah. <laughs> and we want it facing MV. I always get so nervous doing this. No explosions, okay. <laughs> so we want to be distilling water. I think for now we're gonna borrow the water source from our ore processing. Yeah, right here, the reservoirs. And for now we'll just hook this straight up to our distillery and wrench the outputs to automatically insert into the distillery. This is going to be on circuit 5. We can output this straight into the mixer here where I think it will mix into IC2 coolant using lapis dust. Now this is all the lapis we have to our name right now so I'm hoping this is going to be enough but it does give us a thousand litres per since we're using the distilled water rather than regular water. Much more efficient like this. Oh wait a second. Blue dye? We don't, <laughs> we don't want to be making blue dye here. This has to be on circuit 2. Alright, it's been some time, I didn't realise how long that distillery setup would take. So I went back to the Twilight Forest, picked up our miner, and uh, replaced that thing on a lapis vein. Just to make sure we'd have enough for the IC2 coolant. But checking back on our list here, we're not doing very well. <laughs> we don't have either of these set up right now. But yeah, next on our clipboard today is to add another blast furnace. Eventually we'll have more than just two. But I think for now, just another one will be sufficient. And really, at this point, the blast furnaces aren't too bad to make. It actually only requires LV circuits. We need some iron furnaces here. Oh, and I did actually also nick the, the distillery that was here, which we use for heavy oil, since the LV one took too long. So, yeah, we're now using this advanced distillery for distilled water. We have 23k IC2 coolant and some in the chemical bath, which is above here. 
This is where hot can falling gets are going to be. But there is another electric blast furnace controller. Trying to decide if we want to run the second one at MV or at LV. Or even HV, we could even just make another two MV energy input hatches. Yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do that actually. We will of course need more input and output hatches. The input is on circuit 1 with a chest. And output should be circuit 2 with polyethylene. We also need input hatch for fluids. Maintenance hatch. Always forget about this thing, I'm not used to this. <laughs> and also the muffler hatch. So I didn't actually realise there was multiple tiers of muffler hatch, I just thought it was the one block. But as you can see here, the LV1, which we have currently on our blast furnace, reduces pollution to 100%, which I guess doesn't reduce pollution? I don't know. <laughs> but the MV1 here, which we can craft, reduces it to 87% of the pollution output. So we'll swap out the one we already have and add this to our new one. And last part we need for this is the energy hatches. Uh, this is some very tedious crafting again, but we should have all the components for this. Alright, a little bit of crafting and we have it, our two energy input hatches. I was looking at just getting one HV, but this is a little bit far to stretch for now. Oh, and we got our quest for that. Last part we need for the blast furnace is some more invar casings, or heatproof casings. So let's see if we can start to cool off these hot canthal ingots. We are going to use a dolly for this, since if we pick them up, we get burned. <laughs> I think even with our oven gloves on. Let's try this out, hopefully we don't die from this. Oh no, that's that's way more tame than I thought. <laughs> 60 seconds per recipe, this is going to take an eternity. Well, we've got some waiting to do, this is Greg Tech New Horizons after all. Yep, this is going to take forever, and I was looking at the, well I was crafting actually, I was looking at some of the quests, and we could have maybe actually just gone for the clean room first. Yeah, the clean room here doesn't actually look too bad, it's a lot of MV components, plus uh, some Plascrete. I guess the controller's HV. But even still, I mean, this isn't too far out of reach for us, and something we'll probably look into next episode. But it's done now, it's done. <laughs> we'll eventually get our vacuum freezer for hot ingots. Let's uh, not build this blast furnace on the chunk border, so I think we'll put it on this side instead. Alright, this should be the shape of our blast furnace. We are actually one case in short on the on the corner there. Although while we're here, let's also replace this muffler hatch on our original blast furnace. I don't know how much of a difference that will make. This area is still very, very heavily polluted, but every little helps, I think. So yeah, at this point, we're just waiting on our coils for this. Actually, no, we have to get some power over here. And this time for the power, I think we're going to go with one turbo combustion generator to generate HV power, and then we'll plug a transformer into the MV hatches on our blast furnace. But if we're going to be crafting HV machines, we may as well work through some of these quests here in HV and start to batch up all of the robot arms, the pistons, the motors. I don't know if there's actually a quest for the motors in this one. Oh, it's all one, it's all into one quest here. Although before we go crafting a bunch of HV components, look at all these quest rewards we have unclaimed. This is going to give us a lot of MV loot bags. Which I think again we'll trade for HV. That was totally worth That was totally worth it. <laughs> oh, the torches. This pack hates me. This is becoming a theme here. Blue alloy cable. Ah, oh, that could be worse. And we're left with a spare MV. A brewing stand. <gasps> oh, we got the brewing stand. This is awesome. We can make an advanced brewery with this. Or maybe probably even HV brewery. Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> I ain't mad anymore. I ain't mad anymore. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, let's get back to crafting our HV stuff. And this time, instead of aluminium, it's stainless steel. Instead of double cupernickel wire, it's four times electrum wire. That is a lot of gold and silver to be using. Oh, and silver cables. Wow, this is getting expensive really quickly. <laughs> we should have a lot of silver, though, to be fair. Yeah, look at all that silver we just got from our miner. And our gold supply, we're at... 300 gold. Oh, but yeah, we did also make up some Electrum earlier on. So we have probably enough for today, at least. Our poor little LV wire mill has to do four times the work now. We have so many wires to produce now. <laughs> Check out this magnet. <laughs> Look how cool that thing is. So I actually found out you can put it in the weapon slot here on this tab. And then you can equip your weapons with a keybind in this pack. Which is pretty cool. It means that we can easily turn it on and off. I thought that was pretty awesome. And it doesn't fit in a bobble slot either. We only have four bobble slots in this pack as well, so... 
yeah, that's a that's a cool little trick if any of you guys have this magnet. Anyways, I've been gathering a bunch of the HV materials here. I think we have everything. This is our last six stainless ingots. We have multiple stacks of dust. They just have to be run through the blast furnace though. But we're basically going to make as much as we can. So there's 60 mores. We're short on Electrum, which is currently in the wire mill. We'll also need the piston. No stainless rods. Did I leave those in the extruder? Wait a second. I could have sworn I made stainless rods. No way, we may be waiting for some more stainless then in this case. Well, I guess in that case we're going to take a few stacks of stain- well, just one stack. Our blast furnace setup isn't optimal right now. And we'll also need some oxygen for this. We have plenty of oxygen here in our super tank. Yeah, let's get this blast furnace running some more stainless for us. And currently we're at 72 canthal, so we're almost there. That gives you an idea how long I've been at this though. And the excess hot coolant I've just stored in a tank above here. We can actually recycle this later on. Once we have our vacuum freezer, we can freeze it straight back into regular IC2 coolant. So not much reason to void it, but there is 12 stainless steel rods with the last six ingots we had. With that, we can make our piston. Make sure we have these in our inventory for the quest. We also need the HV pump, the conveyor module, and I think robot arm is the last one, which does require us to use an HV circuit, of which we have 12. Yeah, 12. Actually, you know what? Let's make two robot arms, since we'll need the assembling machine. Yeah, look, it's one of the first quests here for the assembling machine at HV tier, which normally always requires two robot arms. Two HV robot arms lock the recipe, and this should be our quest. You're gonna hate this. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, interesting. Look at this. We have actually unlocked the moon. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're nowhere near this yet, but it's interesting that we've unlocked the quest for it so far. I'm looking forward to Advanced Rocketry, actually. I, I really, really enjoyed it in Divine Journey. But back to the task at hand. So we're currently waiting on one more piece of stainless so that we can bend these into plates to make up our final electric piston, which uh, should allow us to craft this co turbo combustion generator and power our blast furnace. Actually, we should check. Is there a quest for this? So at this point, we're still waiting on around 20 canthal, but I have just been busy collecting the materials up to replace our pump here. And we're going to do this at MV this time. It gives us a 41 by 41 area. Unlike the LV one, which I think was only 21 by 21. And since it's now MV, we'll need an MV combustion generator to power this. Oh, we need a circuit. And make sure to plug up this hole this time. I wonder if this pump will just continue where the LV one left off. I kind of doubt it though, since it was probably tied to the machine block itself, these mining pipes. We may have to manually replace those. Okay, MV, MV. And we forgot the fuel. Although the quest reward for the combustion generator does give us C10 boosted diesel. It also gives us regular, yeah, let's burn the regular one. We'll save the C10. Okay, do you work? I think I'm going to have to replace this mining pipe, to be honest. Oh, it's actually working just by giving it some more mining pipe. That's nice. That is awesome. So I was just doing a final double check of this cantho recipe. Just to make sure we didn't miss anything. And it turns out we actually have missed something very important here. So we need the molten cooper nickel, we have the ingots, but we need to actually fluid extract them, which is an MV recipe. And currently we're only working with the LV fluid extractor. I knew this recipe would take a pump. <laughs> oh, these pumps. I did just recently top up this work table for all the MV components, so maybe actually we have it here. We just need the wrench. Oh, we have it, nice. And the piston? Two glass, two circuit, two copper wire and a machine hole, easy which is going to sit probably on the end of this MV wall. I don't imagine we'll have too many more MV machines, at least not located here. And we'll replace our assembling machine and the fluid extractor. I may actually end up shuffling a few of these machines around just to get them in a more optimal position. Like probably this chemical bath when it's finished with the canthal will be moved on the corner here probably. Actually, speaking of canthal, how are we doing here? Stacking 49, okay, we're close, we're close. In the meantime though, let's set up the power system for our blast furnace. So we'll need our mo medium voltage transformer here. Although this does block the maintenance hatch. I wonder if we can put this on top, that would be really really good. Like here. Let's try it here, we may have to move that block. The turbo combustion is going to insert into the transformer here. I think we are safe just to do this with 2x wire. This may need to be 4x wire, hold on. Yeah, after thinking about it some more, we do actually need the 4x here since this outputs 4 amps of MV power, and the MV hatch will ex happily accept or draw that much power from the transformer. Actually, that's a lie. This only accepts up, up to 2 amps, so maybe we can get away with 2x cable. But we're going to play it safe and do 4. 
I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I just want to avoid an explosion. But this should work. This should provide it enough energy for this blast furnace. So long as we power this combustion generator. And for this, we're going to be using our fuel system. Although we are still yet to run the fuel line over here. I'm still not sure what the best way to do that is. Or even if the blast furnaces will live in this room. Although given that this is very heavily polluted, we probably want to keep the blast furnaces over this side of the base. Let me know if you have any suggestions on that actually, but I think for now we'll just be filling this manually with fuel. Alright, seven more canthal to go. Let's start making all of this into wires. Just double check the quest doesn't require us to hold wires or something <laughs> silly like that. But it's just the canthal, canthal coil blocks. So we're going to wire melt all of these things. And we can start melting the cooper nickel coils in the fluid extractor. We got all of our mica should be in the output of this spending machine. Yeah, look at all that thing. It's only one ingot per, so actually we only need 16 ingots of this. Alright guys, it is time. The canthal wire is slowly trickling in, we need circuit 3. Mica foils, canthal wire, and we're making our coils. Alright, 1 of 16, here we go. <laughs> and our quest. Nice. <laughs> Alright, let's get these things installed. So we have a blast furnace. Incomplete structure. I bet it's this maintenance hatch right here. <laughs> I guess we can put it on the bottom side here. Now do you farm. Yeah, there we go. We got a blast furnace. We need to perform some maintenance on this though. Oh, I was just grabbing the tools. Look at this. I didn't know you could do this with the soldering iron. I'm not actually sure what this is used for in world, but uh, I think all we have to do is click this with our fine wire here. Well, we got an achievement for that. So I guess that worked. Yeah, nice. All right, let's try out with some of the cryolite we got from our miner in the twilight forest as we're kind of running out of aluminium again. Should be processed here. Oh yeah, look at all that. Stacks on stacks. Give this thing some oxygen. Although these are backwards. Yeah, I kind of want this the other way around. Input bus goes in the front. Input hatch on the side here. Give this some oxygen. Alumina dust, cryolite dust. Quick backup before we power this on. Just, <laughs> just in case I rewired this wrong. Alright, fuel the combustion generator. And hit it with a hammer. 10 seconds for aluminium. Look at that, that's glorious. <laughs> that is awesome. And this way we're no longer relying on steam. I'll probably end up adding some batteries into this and then switching this over to a similar system. And then of course wiring in our fuel here. But now at this point we can tick off all three items on our list for today. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and with that I think it's a good point to wrap up the episode. Thank you for your patience on this one. I, uh, I'm really really liking where this is going now. I think we're in a comfortable position to start moving forward. I think the clean room is going to be next up for us. This is going to allow us to create the next tier of circuits. No doubt we'll hit some snags along the way though. But yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all soon for some more Greg Tech New Horizons.